the vote. Uh, so I, I sincerely appreciate that. I just want to just do a, a, a one thing before we before we start, um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Brother Ansel. You probably won't hear from me uh, throughout until it's Q and A time. Uh, the Federation is a 501c3, as is uh, M Gage is a 501c3, um, and I would I kindly like to remind. Um, everybody participating, especially our speakers, that at no time should we be endorsing any candidate or any party over another. Uh, those are the uh, nonprofit rules. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. My, my, Habib, my uh, humble and blessed scholars, our imams and sheikhs, for taking your time out of your busy day to uh, join this, this great effort. And thank you, M. Gage, Brother M. Sal, for all the, the good work that you guys are doing on motivating and getting our community out to vote. Um, and I'm done. So, alhamdulillah, I will turn it over to you, Brother M. Sal, and bismillah. Bismillah. Jazakallah, I kind of appreciate it. Uh, well, first and foremost, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. Um, I first, I want to say thank you to the amazing uh, imams and, and all of the people who are attending today's event. So just to introduce myself, my name is Ansel Pratt III. I am the, the new director of operations for Engage Florida. Uh, for those who may not know, Engage is a political advocacy organization that's geared towards the, the education, the empowerment, and, and engaging of the Muslim community. Uh, under the Engage umbrella, we have different entities, but the 501c3 primary focus is just making sure that we encourage our Muslim community to get out to vote and be involved with the political process. Uh, when, I, when I think back, um, it's interesting that I actually have uh, a very unique background dealing with you know, the Muslim community and elections. Uh, 18 years ago, when I was uh, president of the Black Student Union at FAU, I was making a run to become student body president there. Uh, and one of the organizations and, and communities that I had to go meet with was the Muslim student organization at FAU, where at the time, their advisor, Dr. Khaled Hamza at Florida Atlantic University, invited me to several halakas that I had at his house. Uh, I was very moved by, by those which, and I, and I always credit that those halakas and those experiences that I had, uh, I was a catalyst to uh, me eventually accepting El-Islam a few years later. So again, I always have a, a um, uh, a beautiful tie with the, the Muslim community, especially around elections with that. Now, when I became student body president, here's basically what happened. I was told that myself and my staff of 15 had $400,000 in 12 months to, do, uh, to better the lives of the students at FAU. And, and basically what in essence that was is I became a custodian and, and I know that many Jumas that I go to, I always hear uh, imams mention about how uh, everything here belongs to Allah and all we are custodians and how we're using Allah's resources uh, to the best of our ability. One of the things that I would hope that we can continue to do is look at our elected officials as just that as well. These are custodians that are looking to uh, utilize the the tax dollars that we have to make uh, to better the lives for as many people uh, as many americans as possible so no matter where you go you cannot escape paying taxes on either the federal level the state level or the local level and, and for those who don't know you know what your tax dollars go to pay for on a on a state and local level is the schools that we have the parks that we have the fire department police department uh foster care system for kids uh bettering our, road, our local roadways, all those are paid through the local tax dollars. On a federal level, uh, federal level, there is like the Social Security, Medicare, food stamps, and, and, and assistance for, for disability. So that just kind of gives you an idea that when we are out, when we're promoting these elect, uh, when we're talking about make sure that you have a hand in selecting these elected officials, the big thing that we really want to make sure that people uh, the lens that we hope that you will look at this is, is these are custodians. Who do we want to, uh, to be the best custodians of the resources to, to impact not only, you know, the entire state of Florida, but also the Muslim Ummah. So with that being said, I, I, I want to get ready to go ahead and turn it over to our wonderful guests that we have here uh, and, and want to uh, be able to uh, 
offer an opportunity for each one of them to, to their, introduce themselves, which community that they represent, uh, and then just an opening statement from them. So first, we're going to go ahead and start with Sheikh Tariq. So Sheikh Tariq, if you're there, I'm going to turn the floor over to you to do uh, a three to five minute introduction of yourself, the community, and, and why you feel that it's important to be participating in today's event. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For some, them, seems like the camera is not working, is it? That's because you have to uh, uh, turn your camera on, Habibi. <laughs> it's on, but uh, let's see. Uh, well, that's technology. See the camera on the bottom? There's a uh, Yes, we have ah, it. There you go. <laughs> You're working out. Awesome. It's working now, alhamdulillah. Well, um, <clears throat> actually, I was thinking earlier that uh, we really don't have a lot of uh, time. Uh, we have uh, four speakers and we have uh, only uh, one hour to go. And I uh, believe that we really should uh, focus on uh, this, uh, as you mentioned, important issue. So briefly, uh, my name is Dr. Shebi and I'm from the um, uh, South uh, Miami area. And Alhamdulillah, I've been here in the community for uh, over 25 years and uh, some of you have seen me in different massages not just uh, in south uh, south miami uh, and alhamdulillah uh, all i ask is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept even, even a very small portion of this deed um and uh, we're here uh, also for full disclosure um you know um, doing this out of my own uh, agreement and there is uh, no payment involved and there is no uh, hidden agenda and it's all you know based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and what's uh, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said because at the end we are accountable to Allah when we are alone in that grave so may Allah help all of us Jazakallah, I appreciate it. Okay, next up, i uh, love to be able to get an opening statement from uh, Imam uh, Shaquille. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon all of you. And um, before I begin any intro, I, want, I would like to welcome my dear brother Ansel Parad to engage. And we go long back, but and I'm really delighted to see you in this position. May Allah make you successful here, inshallah. So my background, uh, alhamdulillah, I've been uh, part of the Muslim community in the South Florida Muslim community, tri-county area. Uh, my focus is uh, Broward area, uh, several masajids, not just one masjid, uh, from east to west, just because I'm located more in Broward and around that area. So I'm active in, in the masajids and the community in the Broward area. Uh, with that said, I would repeat uh, Brother Shep Tariq's uh, disclaimer. I'm here on, in my own capacity, not, uh, you know, uh, my, my thoughts and my views are uh, individual. Inshallah, that will help uh, people, people here in this uh, community uh, and help alleviate some of the questions and concerns they have around voting in elections. So when, it, when time comes, inshallah, I will speak around that as well. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, Imam Ismail. So, uh, Brother Ismail, the floor is yours. Brother, are you, are you speaking or are you on mute? Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. Yes, we can. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And um, thank you for this opportunity. So, I'll get straight into it. My name is Muhammad Ismail Lunat, and I am the Imam of. Uh, the masjid in uh, Purdy Lane, West Palm Beach, known as the Muslim Community of Palm Beach County. So in my few minutes, I just wanted to mention that inshallah through um, some of our understanding of what uh, the Sharia says about you know, uh, the voting process, I want to just start um, by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tuwadul amanat ila ahliha wa idha hakamtum bin al-nas an tahkumu bil adl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands you to fulfill your obligations uh, towards those who are entitled to them. And Allah said that when you judge uh, between people, then judge with fairness. 
So Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, never delivered a khutbah. Ma khatabana ras, Nabiullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illa qal, except he would say, uh, la iman liman la amanata lah, wa la deen liman la ahda lah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give khutbahs often, and he would always say that there is uh, no, there is uh, one who has no amana, no trust, uh, has no faith, and the one who breaks his promises or his covenants has no religion. So what we discern from uh, these verses and hadith like this is that um, it's very important a principle that the selection of people who are in positions of authority um, is taken uh, in, you know, with its due importance. And it is in fact a religious matter because those are people who are in positions of authority and trust. So Islam in this regard does not uh, recognize a separation of religion and state and also that the people who are chosen uh, must have certain qualifications uh, and, and have a certain position. So from this we can differentiate in my last one or two minutes that in the process that is uh, advertised so often known as democracy, uh, it would be, we would say it would be concerned with the, uh, it is a mechanism for selecting people for government, okay? and uh, Islam is not so concerned uh, with the process, but places a greater emphasis on the selection. So, for, and by the way, uh, interestingly enough, that's also what we find today. Uh, just recently, I was reading The Guardian, and a Republican Senator Mark Lee uh, said he echoed similar sentiments. He said that democracy is not the objective, and he's being lambasted for that, right? So, he says, liberty. Uh, peace and prosperity uh, are the aim. And he said, and I quote, that democracy thwarts that process. So Islam is concerned less about the process, though at times, yes, and that's why we're here to discuss this, but it is concerned about the outcome, that what happens after the process. Uh, because we can see, for example, that uh, James Madison said that people will have the virtue and intelligence to select men of virtue and wisdom. Well, we know that 200 years of American history shows that many times uh, people who were selected were not men of virtue. And in our recent history, uh, let's see what comes to mind. For example, in the atrocities in, in Bosnia and, and, and Kosovo, uh, the, the, the Serbian leaders were democratically elected. And throughout the world today, we see that uh, a number of the atrocities committed against um, uh, you know, humankind or the citizens are carried out by democratically voted in individuals. So Islam wants to look at what is the outcome, and yes, does have a say as to the process, and that's what will come up in our question and answer, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah, Kareem. Appreciate that, Imam. So, so I'm actually going to go and open it up to some of the other Imams to see uh, to, with the question of why do you feel that it's important for Muslims to be involved with the political process? And Brother uh, Imam Shaquille, would you like to go first? I can go. Oh, oh sure. Go ahead, uh, uh, Brother Tarek. Go ahead. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Let me summarize and uh, really put it in uh, uh, clear um, what we are talking about here. There's two... We live in the West. As Muslim, we live in the West in a non-Muslim uh, country. And the question is, is voting, are we allowed to participate in this voting process or not? There's some people who will say it's haram. And actually, in some in the members, they say you should not participate in, the, in voting. Others, they say it is okay, but there are some, you know, condition. And a third opinion, and by the way, when I said all these three opinions, not in, in, in order of importance, just, you know, citing them. And others said, as long as we live in a, you know, in, in a community, we, uh, we are allowed and there's nothing wrong with voting. And that last opinion is not my opinion. And it's the opinion of the high 
uh, organization of Muslim scholars, which was established in 1962, which is about 60 years ago. And it's located in Mecca. And it's composed of highly selected Muslim scholars around the world. And this specific question was posed to this organization. And in their meeting, not last year, not the year before, not in 2016, in 2007, 13 years ago, specifically uh, in November, between November 3rd and November 8th in, uh, in Mecca. And they said that the voting of Muslims in a non-Muslim countries is based on what benefit could bring to the Muslim community. And specifically, they said, يجوز للمسلم الذي يتمتع بحقوق المواطنة. This is allowed for a Muslim who has that ability to vote in a country that is not Muslim to participate in the election and other event because of his participation or her participation of the benefit that could bring to the Muslims. So, and this is the news, no ambiguity about this. You know, that is allowed, and again, this is not my opinion, this is the opinion of 60 of the highest scholars in the Muslim world. However, there's, you know, the intention has to be, in a Muslim, you know, uh, when you go vote, is the embitterment of the lives of the Muslim in that community because the Muslim in that community are considered a minority. So the intention has to be to the embitterment and to ameliorate the uh, condition, the lives of the Muslim in that community. Two, that this participation should not, should not uh, conflict, conflict with somebody's religion. I'll give you a simple but maybe stupid example. Like this country, we have two major parties. Say it's a Democratic Party and a Republican Party. Okay. Imagine if we have the Catholic Party and the uh, what's the other another domination religion one, um, the Catholic and Protestant. Pro Protestant, for example. And in order to participate, you have to be part of those. Then immediately I'll say. It's haram and you cannot do it. So the opinion of the scholar is, has absolutely, is very clear and it's allowed. And they go on to mention the example of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam ask, and this is mentioned in Surah Yusuf, verse 55 clearly, where Yusuf alayhi salam ask that he will be in charge of the finances of Aziz, who was not Muslim. And after that, the benefit that came up, you know, by the fact that Yusuf salam was part of that government. And the scholar also used the verse from Surah Hud, verse 91, when they told, قَالُوا يَا شُعَيْبْ مَا نَفْقَهُ كَثِيرًا مِمَّا تَقُولُ Oh, Shu'ayb, we don't understand more of what you said. And we see you that you're negligent, except you come from a big family. And the scholar used this verse to justify when Muslims participate, they will have a say. You know, this is, you know, nowadays term would be a say in the process. And third, uh, when something that we uh, sometimes uh, neglect and don't see, Election is not about only a president. There's so many other things that are involved in this election. Local election, uh, state election, and among, like for, for example, this year, we have six amendments. And two of them, every Muslim should say, give a say on it. I remind myself, and I remind you, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'amuruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna al munkar wa ta'uminuna billah. You are the best mankind, the best ummah, the best people sent to humanity to promote good and to prohibit evil. The promotion of that good and to seek the well-being of all members of the community. This is, for example, you look at amendment number two, which is raising the Florida minimum wage. What is non-Islamic about wanting other human beings to have a decent wage? That's an amendment. You go, you can participate in this. If you don't want to talk about, you know, vote for a president, this is an amendment. This is something that is Islamic. It's very important, you know, because when we raise that minimum wage, you're going to, you know, empower people, you're going to lift them from poverty, you know, it's a lot of benefit, you know, for the community in general. Look at uh, Amendment 5, for example, the limitation of homestead assessment, as assessment. This is something that I myself lived. I used to live in a small house, and alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me and moved to a bigger house. But my taxes before were a certain level. When I went to a bigger house, if I pay the value of the bigger house, then the taxes will be, you know, tremendous. So this is what you call that portability. And this is what is at stake now. So this is involved, every single one of us is this panel. And uh, to give you a specific uh, number, my taxes went from $7,000 to $3,000 because of this. Now they're trying to limit it. So um, in, in, in summary, I don't want to take a lot of time because I know there's other uh, brothers and they want to talk. The rule of thumb, the golden rule, the rule is if your participation may generate good for Muslim and humanity, and as long as it does not contradict your religion and your belief, then it is okay to go and to do it. You know, the benefit for the general community. Awesome. Jazakallah. Thanks again for that, Imam. I'm, I'm actually going to turn it over now to uh, Imam uh, uh, Shaquille. So if you want to go ahead and give your comments as well. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Um, I would like to focus on things that Brother Shabbi hasn't mentioned, so I'm changing my script a little bit. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah An-Nahl, in chapter 16, ayah number 90. Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i bil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi in the meaning of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us uh, that Allah commands justice, fairness, and bringing to the near kinsmen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered multiple places in Quran, not just one. This ayah is one ayah, and there are multiple places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu ladina abudu kunu qawwa amina bil qisti, stand up for justice. Stand up for fairness. How do you stand up for justice and fairness in a society that is operating in, in a certain framework? Now, besides what is being said already with respect to theoretically whether it is uh, halal or, or haram or what it, whether it's recommended or not recommended, those we have heard those uh, arguments and and uh, and religious angle also you know what does our faith say and clearly of there is there is a divide and certain people would would insist that not to vote and by the way the scholars who used to say that boycott voting and and what have you are have also changed their stances over a period of time now i see more on more and more of them have also looked at the at the the the, the need of the time and the situation because 
Sharia is based on zaman and makan and the need of the time. Certain things that may not be applicable in certain conditions will be applicable in certain conditions. So having said this, this one principle of fairness and justice, second thing I would like to mention, and, and basically this is a question for all of us, first religious and civic together, I don't think we have a choice between voting and non-voting or not voting. We have a choice between voting for our chosen candidate or voting for something, someone that we don't choose. Meaning if let's say we opt, we say it's not okay to vote, let's sit back and watch. You're essentially voting for a candidate that you don't like to be voted meaning internally you have already made up your mind that you have you side with this candidate because he's doing the right things he's doing the justice or he's pursuing justice and fairness but for you not to vote for him you are essentially voting for the one who is not standing up for those principles so the choice essentially is between voting for someone you have chosen that you would like to vote but you are not voting because of your uh, you know religious preference and you are saying that voting is not allowed and then you choose not to vote you're essentially you have voted for the candidate that you didn't want to be voted in the first place that's the first point second thing people have problem with the system of governance when it comes to um, our aqida and our beliefs and our belief system in Islam. There are certain principles, let's say in a model of government, government may not fit in or may not, may not fit in the, the, the paradigm of the Quran and the Sunnah directly. But selection of candidates is a process to, to get those candidates in that system. If you have a problem with the system, you will just say, I'm not going to select anybody. This is what we are cho choosing to. When we are saying, okay, I'm not going to vote, you have a problem with the, or we have a problem with the voting system or system of voting. So you are, because you have disagree with the system of, or some principles of the system of government, government you are saying, I'm going to boycott the voting process, and then you are going to end up in candidates who are running not your agenda, but somebody else's agenda. We have impact in our society, commerce. We all work here. We all, all live here. We have security issues. We have the, uh, the, the race issue here, African-American. This about 50% of our community is African-American. And they have been faced with this, this onslaught of, of discrimination. Would we like to put somebody in the office who doesn't see those issues and who is not standing for justice and fairness for those causes. The president alone selects 15 secretaries, 15 heads of departments. He nominates Supreme Court justices. He nominates ambassadors and he nominates 50 department heads including but not limiting to Federal Reserve, Security Exchange, SEC, um, Foreign Office, State Department, Labor Department, Agriculture Department. So we are saying no to all of that. We are saying we are, we are coming out of the stake. And the Prophet said, Manra minkum munkiran fal yawayirhu biyadihi fa illam yastati that the Prophet said, if you see something wrong, stop it by hand. If you cannot do so, stop it by your tongue. If you cannot do so, consider that it's wrong in your heart. And that's the least iman you can have. So where do we stand? We see all these things happening, unfolding in our eyes, and this is an opportunity, opportunity given to us to select the right person 
and we are saying we are not going to select because we don't agree with the selection process. We don't agree with the system of the governance, but essentially you are selecting, choosing to select the candidate that you didn't want to. And the third point I would like to mention the last is Islam in Islam, the four Khulafai Rashidun, the four pious caliphs, starting with Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali radiallahu anhu. All of them were chosen in four different methods. They were not chosen in one method. And the Prophet وسلم, did not choose his successor before his death. However, he hinted his succession. He hinted. However, he didn't choose. And after that, the next Khalifa and the next Khalifa and the next Khalifa, all four of them were selected by four different methods. If the method was set in, in a certain way, then we would have all said that there is no change in that method. But the, the Prophet himself وسلم, did not set one method. And he left this door open because Islam is a religion that addresses dynamic problems over until the day of judgment. So things will change, the problems will change, and the dynamicity of the issues would come into play. And hence the Prophet some chose the the wisdom behind it. So exactly. I would rest this year. Appreciate that. It, it, so what I'm always what I'm constantly hearing is how um, elections have consequences and how certain decisions aren't just for immediately that time, but it may play out uh, years to come and for generations. So I wanted to, you know, ask any of you about um, what is the the youth in our, you know, responsibility in this voting process, because inevitably someone who's in office can make decisions that may impact you for years to come. So anyone who wants to uh, be able to talk about, you know, the importance of why we should encourage our youth to be involved as well. Do we have any youth leaders here? <laughs> well, you know what, if, 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 if that's not the case, I'll tell you what, uh, we can go ahead and uh, push it back over to uh, Imam Ishmael and let him weigh in as well too, since uh, he didn't get a chance to speak yet. Go ahead. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I think uh, Dr. Tariq um, and Sheikh have, uh, Imam have covered most of it. I just will um, uh, say a few things that not not uh, precede the questions. So basically, um, what I wanted to just add is that um, there are many things that happen, you know, in uh, in our uh, political lives or in the, that affect us individually, right? So uh, to just to sit back and say that we're not going to do anything, and uh, is is uh, is not something that will be practical as Muslims who live in this country. Uh, going back to what was said also about what the scholars have written. Um, the, uh, many have heard of uh, Sheikh Uthaymin, and he even said that uh, at some times it's an obligation uh, to vote um, because a person can affect uh, his life by the process in which people who are put in positions of authority are selected. So the thing that I just will, will mention in just one or two minutes is that even though there may be an objection or um, an issue with the process, uh, the Sharia answers questions that uh, sometimes we cannot answer. In the sense here, for example, there's a principle where it says, uh, that sometimes the choosing of the lesser of two evils is a principle in our Sharia. And for example, uh, the Prophet وسلم, when he's, he allowed the Bedouin to, to continue urinating. Okay? So he could have stopped him, but he chose the lesser because to stop someone in the process of relieving could be detrimental to his health, etc. Et okay? So the Sharia does give us leeway. And that's why uh, in, in a more basic and something that I don't think anyone would have an objection to, and how I was convinced from you know, the time I was just a, a student in college to uh, you know, undergoing or going through the, the, the journey on seeking knowledge is that if your local school board, for example, says that we're having an election for our community where we are going to introduce or vote on a certain curriculum, and we know that this curriculum has components that are completely against 
uh, any of the monotheistic religions, let's say, okay? And that's what's happening today. And we Muslim parents, we say, no, we will not accept this process. So that's okay. And if our children are in that school and the votes are tallied in favor of this curriculum, who is the one who suffers? So in this like simple, but yet you know, a, a, a process that comes to us at the, um, the county level or the city level, municipal level, it's just an example to show you that at times it is a, an obligation for Muslims to mobilize themselves so that they can affect the change that uh, is, uh, is in their interests. And that's how I'll end uh, my few minutes on that. Zakala, thank you. Thank you so much for that. So, so what I want to do, uh, we're going to be now um, getting close towards the, the end of the hour. So I want to say if, if we have anyone in the audience that has questions, please do, I meant to mention this earlier, but please put your questions in the chat. Uh, we have uh, one of our uh, teammates identify which ones we'll be able to try and get to your question. And inshallah, we'll try and get to those questions. Uh, what I do want to do is when when discussing a few things, you know, a couple of housekeeping things that's coming up, uh, we know that we're still in the midst of a, of a pandemic right now. So there's a lot of emphasis that uh, Engage has been doing with encouraging those to request your vote by mail ballot. There's a lot of... Um, I'm going to say disinformation out there that talks about the, the validity of having your vote counted by mail. Uh, but what we are encouraging others to do is even if you receive your vote by mail ballot, we want to encourage you to fill it out at home. And if you don't feel comfortable with mailing it in, uh, by October 20th, most of all the counties are going to have their early polling locations open at that time where they will have a drop box. And inshallah, you can go there and drop it off without having to wait in long lines and, and, and be, being able to keep with social distancing. So just wanted to make sure that we put that information out there for you uh, before we get go to any other questions that we have. Um, I think uh, Imam uh, Shaquille, I think you wanted to weigh in on something else as well, too. Absolutely. So the, your question uh, regarding youth, I would like to uh, address that. Please. Uh, so what I'm seeing is uh, in our community, when you speak, the engagement in the youth, you don't see much in the, the, the process. And uh, let's say there is a heat game coming and, and there is a debate, they would prefer uh, watching the heat game. Um, probably that's better, by the way. Um, looking at our debates, how they are going. <laughs> so the point is our engage, the engagement with, our, the, with the, the youth we have and their uh, political awareness, um, at least uh, you know, the, from the observation perspective, we don't see maybe they have it and they are not displaying it, but they are not very, some of them are very vocal. We saw you know, when it came to Black Lives Matter, and some of the issues around the uh, African uh, American community, they, the youth came out and they, they supported the, the causes. But we don't see them you know, engaging in, uh, for example, uh, the, the discussion around educational expenses or you know, getting a college degree, how difficult it is because the, the system right now here is once you get um, uh, your high school done, then you have to pay for your college if you don't end up getting the certain scholarships. So education is one uh, matter to them. The other thing is uh, because of COVID, some of our youth who was working before, uh, they lost their jobs and now they are on the, uh, on the government support or the, uh, the unemployment support and some of them have it, some of them don't. Plus the youth have other issues, you know, the, uh, or other challenges that they, they are facing. So as a community, we have not boiled down because I guess uh, the, the Muslim community, uh, the leadership is dominated by, by immigrants, I guess. And they focus, they tend to focus on uh, international issues, um, issues related to Kashmir, issues related to Palestine, um, you know, also the issues related to refugees entering the United States. Obviously, these are important issues. No one is going to undermine. But our is our youth connected to those issues? Talking to the youth, most of the youth is not connected. And I can, you know, speak about my children who are now going to vote because they are eligible to vote this elections. 
So they are not connected to those issues. So as a community, we have not also done a very good job boiling down our issues and then selecting and prioritizing the youth issues and youth matters that need to be prioritized. So between candidate X and Y, do they know the difference between them? Or is just the liking of their parent that they're gonna ask, who, who should I vote? So that awareness um, needs to be built up. Maybe it is there, it's not seen. Maybe the elections would expose that. Um, I have spoken to several of the youth members who are saying they're not gonna vote for this year. And they don't have a, a solid reason why they are not voting. And one of the reasons I, I received was, we don't see any difference between the two candidates. So, and they, they are not connected to these four, four or five big ticket items or big ticket things. If that's not mattering, uh, that doesn't matter to them, then the two candidates are equal to them. And so, or, or more than two, we are only talking about two, but there are on the ballot, you'll see six candidates to my surprise. Uh, so cer certain things people don't know. Uh, there is a question about the Supreme Court justice continuity on the ballot. There's question about uh, Florida, uh, you know, um, certain local laws of, of Florida or certain things in Florida, like Brother Shabi mentioned about taxes and, and grandfathering the, the taxes. So those issues have not hit the youth yet. So they are not worried about that. So they're only worried about certain things but they should still vote because even those things are at stake. Yeah, no. No. great. Now, exactly. I appreciate, appreciate the, the, the insight on that. Now, I did get one question from the audience, and I, I want to make sure I read that. They, they were asking, um, would anyone get sin if they vote for someone that does something wrong uh, to harm the community? Sure, feel free to go ahead and chime in, whoever. Go ahead. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, I'll, what I mentioned earlier, the opinion of this scholar from the highest um, organization of Muslim scholars, that, uh, you know, that's really what they do, talk about issues that involve Muslim around the world. Um, the, 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 always the criteria is either to maximize the benefit or minimize the harm. So either you, you know, by your participation, you're gonna maximize benefit or minimize harm, then you, know, you go ahead and you do it. Say you voted for somebody and then turn out did something wrong again. Your intention at the beginning you know, is based on what you have you know, so you, you're free. I mean, there's so many, not just this one, so many other uh, occasions or other events where you go with a certain idea and then it turns out the other way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you, will, I mean, will hold you accountable only to your first intention. So, So if your intention is for the embetterment of the Muslim community or to reduce harm, then, you know, uh, you know that's okay. Further, I want to also mention that uh, Muslims, and this is mentioned in, in, in the Quran, they rejoiced in the victory of non-Muslim, I mean, for, uh, of, of who are non-Muslim over atheist. And this is Surat Ar-Rum, Surat Ar-Rum in the first, first uh, verses. You know, Ghulibat al Rome, when the Prophet وسلم, said the Roman, which is the Byzantine, the Roman Empire, they lost, you know, to the Persian, who are not, you know, not the people of the book. But then the, he said that later on they're going to be winner and the Muslims, and this is the Quran, this is not, you know, an opinion of this Imam or this Imam, this is the Quran. And then the Muslim will rejoice of that. Why? Because it's the victory of somebody from the book over somebody who is not from the book and does not believe. This is the Quran, Surah al rum the first, very first, first uh, four verses that anybody can can read. So, um, and uh, really, it's, it's your intention. 
what you know it's your intention and i want to again say that it's not only it seems like we're focusing only on the presidential there's a lot of other elements that involves you i mean uh there are other things as muslim living in non-muslim country that we do that is more against our religion than voting for example paying taxes that's not in islam you know and let's see any of, of us say no i cannot pay taxes or you drive your car without an insurance and this little passport that you have and you allege allegiance to this to this country these are more sinful then go in and say it's okay to increase the minimum wage for people in this state. I mean, uh, it's really, I mean, wh where is the prior priority? Let me see anybody refusing to pay taxes and see what happened. Or driving your car with an insurance. Or use this, car, this thing to, so you can go to Hajj or go to country, and, but you don't read the print that says you pledge allegiance to this country. The very first page. Jazakallah. Oh. Thanks. Oh, you're on mute. I think you went on mute. So, so I tell you what, I um, wanted to see if anybody else wanted to kind of weigh in on that, but I did have another, uh, if no one did, I have another question that came from the community that was asking, do we feel that, um, in your opinion, from like, uh, from, you know, in your appearance with the community, does it seem as if uh, there are more Muslims that are against the concept of voting or is it just they're not in the know and more them being lazy? I can attempt to take this one. Um, so this is definitely an issue. Um, actually, how much do you care or you care enough that will take you out of your house on a Tuesday, which is a work day. It does, you don't get a, a day off in this country for elections. So how much do, do you feel strong that you would leave your work or you would leave what you're doing and go and vote and come back? So that's the question. Uh, and and you feel, yes, I feel about these issues, they're important to me, but not enough that that would take me out, my, out of my home and I would just go there, drive in and vote. So, and now most of the people or, or a lot of people have access to voting by mail. Uh, all it, it takes is click off a few buttons online where you put your name and your date of birth and they will mail you a uh, uh, mail-in ballot. I don't know if it's still time for that or not, but all of our ballots got mailed out in the last few days. I have, uh, you know, the entire family has uh, mail-in ballot. So this should help our community. But yes, I ag agree with Brother Yunus who has posted the question there that we have this problem of lethargy also in the community that we haven't been able to mobilize and galvanize the community enough that they can leave, they should leave their homes and go and vote. And that's probably where Engage has to do its, its part along with all of us, but you know, organizations like Engage should help because this is voter advocacy and somehow we need to get our masses out, our, um, you know, our sisters, our fathers, brothers, mothers, grandfathers, everyone needs to come out or at least use the mail-in ballot. Uh, mail-in ballot has made it a lot easier compared to physically going and, and, and voting. So there could be other ways also to improve this. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah I, wa I wanna add uh, uh, to that same question. The first thing that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was Iqra, read. And we are called the Ummah of read, the, the Ummah of knowledge. 
And I think it's, it's lack of knowledge. And some people, they just, you know, take whatever, you know, uh, they hear. Sometimes they hear it from an imam, sometimes they don't. And they just take it for granted. They do their own research. and they just... I challenge everybody to show me in the Quran that the voting is haram. And not, and not show me. And this is, again, I am, you know, you know putting this strongly because that's what those scholars said. There's nothing in the Quran or the Sharia that prohibit, you know, a non, I mean, Muslim minority in a non-Muslim country to participate in this process. So, so the question read, here, Brother you're Brother the, the, the people of different. knowledge. Brother Tariq, the question Brother here is different. The question here is lethargy, meaning people are not uh, leaving their homes and going to vote. So not necessarily because of religious re reasons, a good number of people are not going to vote because yeah. they yeah. don't feel strong enough. So that's no, I think the question, question has two parts. It has also part of knowledge, if I remember correctly. You know, look at the, the chat. I think you mentioned also knowledge. It's lack of, of knowledge. Sure. And so I, uh, and I know we want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we had one last question that came in from Facebook that we wanted to ask and whoever, whichever one of the imams that want to address it. So it says, um, should Muslims consider themselves conservatives or liberals? Then there's a second part to it. Um, one of the parties seem to support gay marriage and abortion, which is against Islam. Can we, uh, can we vote for them? <laughs> Whatever part of that question you want to, if, if anyone wants to uh, weigh in on it, but, but or, or let's go with, you know, the first one uh, being conservative or liberal. And, and I, and I, now, you know what, that's not my place. I'm gonna leave that to the scholars. <laughs> I pick one to, to answer the, the call. I mean, the questions, you know, I don't want to jump, but you, you're the panelist. I mean, you're the moderator. Pick one. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we, we, we haven't, we haven't heard from uh, Brother Ishmael. Let you love to be able to have you weigh in and and whatever you you like, you know, just to be able to get you into the discussion. So I think that uh, as Muslims, we always define ourselves uh, by the that. So we are we are uh, are Muslims, and uh, we can never be classified as either one or the other. Uh, if you really look at the core issues, and I think one of the questions was by uh, Brother Atif, who said, "How can we, you know, any guidance on selecting?" So in this regard, we will find that we have uh, similarities and, uh, and uh, disagreements with, with uh, the, the, the principles of both parties. You know? So it's very important that, number one, we educate ourselves as to what issues are important for us. Um, following up on Brother on, uh, Sheikh Tariq is that our aqidah needs to be correct, that we have ikhlas. We also understand that uh, the saying of the Prophet, for example, that um, if, and the entire uh, um, uh, you know, Ummah got together to benefit us. Uh, Fauk, they could not be be benefit us except what Allah has, has already written. So the empty promises of politicians or either party, we have to, you know, um, uh, you know go across those and look at what issues are important to us as a Muslim community, to our individual communities, what things are on the ballot. And, uh, and and then go, you know, in, in that direction in terms of our vote. And as for uh, if one of the parties supports something that is uh, clearly haram, and so we go back to the original principle as to minimizing our detriment for the overall betterment. And uh, of course, keeping in mind that we keep our aqidah always intact with the principles that are laid out by the Quran and the Sunnah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I know that we were, uh, it's almost, it's Margaret. I think we're hearing the, the, um, the call okay. from Margaret. So I want to do a quick, uh, two, <laughs> uh, quick uh, wrap up, uh, last final words from each one of our wonderful panelists that we have today before we uh, break for us a lot. So I tell you what, with uh, Dr. Tar uh, Tark, I'm going to go and turn the floor over to you to give your final remarks. Uh, and then we go to Brother uh, Imam Shaquille and then uh, Imam Ishmael. Okay, go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay, um, inshallah, uh, first of all, well, I, I pray that whatever I said that is correct is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever I said and is wrong is from me and from the shaitan. Um, 
I remind my brothers and sisters that the most important hadith in our, uh, you know, in, 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 in the most important hadith is the first one, which is your intention, all your deed is based on your intention. And if your intention, like, you know, Sheikh Ismail said, if your intention is pure and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, because at the end, you're going to, you know, you're held accountable only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else and for that last piece here so the, the the audience do not feel that we are avoiding this question uh but uh gay is it, um you know i uh, as again chef smile said i'm a muslim and if uh, and i'm not a democrat or, or republican if you know, if I am, you know, from a, a say, you know, a registered with one of them, and then one of them is gay, I will not vote for a gay person. I will not vote for a gay person, regardless of which party he is or she is from. I mean, you know, definitely that's or uh, for abortion, I will not vote for abortion, and, I, and I'm not making an apology about this one. It's a matter of aqida. It's a matter of religion. It's not a matter of party. Okay. May Allah guide all of us. Jazakallah, I appreciate that. And uh, Brother uh, Shaquille, you're next. Sure. Um, I would, uh, I think enough said about the, the things that we have already said, but there's one question parked on the chat. I would quickly like to address that about criminal justice. So I touched a little bit about the issues that we've had with, uh, uh, with the killings uh, and you know, especially the African American American community being at the receiving end of um, you know police brutality and other discriminatory practices, so definitely criminal justice reform is, should be top of the list. That you know when we choose the candidate, who are the candidates who are going to support that kind of legislate legislation, and who would foster that? Who would heal these problems? Who would bring these to a closure instead of replicating it and extending this. These are all the things that need to be taken into consideration when we choose our candidate. When we choose not to vote, again, my punchline is when we are choosing not to vote, we are choosing to vote for someone that we didn't want to vote for in the first place. So that is the, 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 the final word that I would like you to, to consider that when we make that choice of, of not voting, we're choo choosing to vote for the candidate that we didn't want him to be there in the first place. Exactly. Thank you so very much. And last but not least, our good dear brother uh, Ishmael. Uh, I'll just end on um, on a thought that uh, the widespread popularity of uh, of democracy, uh, voting, for example, indic indicates that there is a yearning amongst people for change, for justice, for righteousness, uh, for fairness. And uh, unfortunately, the process does not deliver. Uh, democratic movements, uh, electoral processes have started off with noble intentions and uh, to end, for example, the tyranny, tyranny of uh, autocratic leaders, etc. However, as with all efforts uh, aimed at reforming human society uh, that are free from divine guidance, what we call wahi, uh, they would not reach their ultimate goal. So this panel started out by uh, humanly trying to explain through the understanding of scholarship uh, the wahi that came through, through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through the Quran and his teachings as to how should we interject um, this divine guidance into the process so that inshallah it will bring the, the fruits of a, uh, an out, uh, a fruits of a process that has the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So keep that in mind whenever you do anything in life, but more, more specifically when we go through the political and the electoral process. Awesome. Is that amazing. Okay. Jazakallah Karim. Thank you all for, for the wonderful insight. I'm pretty confident that the entire uh, Ummah uh, will benefit from this. I would like to turn it over real quickly before we go for Salah to uh, my dear brother Nazar, who just want to say uh, final words of thank you to everyone. You're, you're on mute. Nazar, you're on mute. <laughs> Try it again. No, no, can't hear you again. All right, come. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Ah, salam alaikum, everybody. Uh, I wanted to take a moment and thank everybody, and specifically our panelists, Sheikh Tariq, Imam Shaquille, uh, Sheikh Ismail. Thank you very much. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you. Um, I can tell you that um, 
I've learned a lot. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a student. I'm always learning and hearing each of you speak. Um, I, I got a lot of knowledge. And having said that, I just want to remind everybody that this, uh, I'm sorry, the buzzer's going off in the background. I want to remind everybody that this is was streamed up live on Facebook. Um, and I encourage everybody to share it. Um, it's on the SoFlo Muslims uh, uh, website. Uh, I, I cherish everybody's uh, opinions and participation. And, uh, and so I'll let you close it. We have three scholars here to, to close us up with a dua. So <laughs> bismillah. Um, uh, guys, thank you very much. Inshallah, may Allah bless all of you. And uh, inshallah, we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا معصوما وتفرقا من بعده تفرقا معصوما والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات تواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته